Okay, welcome back. This is the second of five podcasts that looks at the um, significance of the essay, in, uh, so the significance of the Night of the Long Knives, um, and in particular focusing in on um, the long term significance. Okay, so uh, in the previous podcast um, we looked at the, the the outcome in terms of the army. Okay, how the Night of the Long Knives impacted on the um, the Rajfair, which of course was the a non-Nazi um, organisation. Um, in this one, we're going to focus in on the Nazi movement itself. So we're going to look at the SA and the SS. So we're looking at this particular uh, strand of my map here. Okay, so... Something just to think about, um, and I'll... I'll, I'll use this sort of diagram quite a lot. Um, you, you've got Hitler at the top of the movement, okay, and let's go back to, let's say, the period 1920, when Nazism first came into existence. <coughs> In a sense, okay, um, you've got put over here on one side you've got the German state okay um, the state uh, the apparatus the machinery that ultimately Hitler wants to take over okay um, the civil service the army the police the the the, 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 the non-nazi institutions that run Germany okay so we'll just park that one uh, for, for the time being and then over here, you've got the Nazi movement. Okay, the people who work with Hitler. And I say, that perhaps if we just think of 1920 to 23, the early years of the Nazi movement. Um, in a sense, the Nazi movement, 1920 to 23, was... Um, there was the party, and I'm going to draw that quite small, um, and as we know, Hitler joined as member number seven. Um, he, he joined the party as member number seven. And then there was the SA. And I've deliberately drawn the SA as a larger um, structure, okay? So you've got the party and you've got the SA. Now, because in the early years, Nazism was a revolutionary um, or, um, organization, um, its purpose was to take power using violence, um, the SA was very much the more important wing of the Nazi movement, okay, uh, in terms of the strategy to take power, which was to ultimately march on the capital city and seize power violently, the SA was um, absolutely crucial, okay, so the SA was the most important part of the Nazi, uh, of, of, of the um, movement. <coughs> now, of course, we move on to 1923 onwards, and so again, we'll just go to a different slide, and again, we'll just put Hitler at the top. The Nazi movement changed, and you've still got Hitler at the top, you've still ultimately, again, just park it over the side, you've got Hitler's intention eventually is to take over the state, okay, but... And then you've got the, the Nazi movement underneath. But in a sense, the, and there you've got the SA. Didn't disappear, but of course the SA's role changed. Its role was no longer to march on Berlin. Its role was to be a propaganda tool that, that worked for the party. Because the new strategy for power was, of course... A legal strategy and in that sense the Nazi party the NSDAP became more important okay um, and as a result of that more and more people joined the party and 
what we call jumping on the bandwagon, particularly after 1930. Um, the, the party became very much sort of a, a, a mass organisation because its strategy was to take power legally. Um, and, and so the party sort of grew. And the SA, in a sense, was always there. And it continued to grow enormously in terms of numbers. But in terms of its importance, um, it was told... Hold that, you know, um, uh, you, you've got to basically behave yourself, you can't use your violent methods. So, in a sense, the party was not quite relegated, so the, the, the essay was not quite relegated, it still played a hugely important role, but it, 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 it was very much um, uh, uh, now an equal role to that of the party. Whereas in the early years of the movement, the, 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 the essay was a sort of crucial aspect. Of, of the Nazi movement because of its revolutionary methods. Then, of course, in 1933, the, sort of the issue of revolution returned. Okay, so I mean, is, is the party revolutionary? Is it not? Of course, during the rise to power, it was. It, it was. You've got. We're not revolutionary. We're taking power legally. But in the year 1933, of course, Earth Rome's hopes were built up that the the SA's day was now back, and of course, its day was back. For a few months, the national uprising election campaign and Gleichschaltung, so the first six months of 1933, in a sense, the SA's hopes were lifted again that it would be the future of Nazism. But then, of course, the 6th of July 1933, Hitler's big speech um, about channeling revolution into the secure bed of evolution was a clear message to the SA, no, the party will continue to be the most important aspect of the Nazi movement <coughs> for a few more years yet. He wasn't saying that the SA was not important, but he was saying, slow down. You've done your bit, you've crushed communism, now you need to basically wait again and follow your orders. So I suppose the point I'm making here is that there was always a real sort of tension between the SA and the party. And, of course, the leader of the SA was Ernst Röhm. And he always, in a sense, resented the people who joined the party. He, he, he saw them as sort of bureaucrats, paper pushers. Um, they were not really the old veterans of the organisation. They were not there at the beginning, the people who joined in 1920. Like the SA were the sort of um, hard-hitting veterans of the organisation. Now, within the SA, of course, you've got a subgroup, and I just drew a little arrow there, the SS. They were Hitler's bodyguard. They were part of the SA, led by Himmler. And the SS um, uh, wore black shirts. Obviously, the SA wore brown shirts, but the SS were part of the SA. Um, we well, hardly mention them, really, um, until the year 1933-34. And their real day came in 1934 with the Night of the Long Knives, okay, so, because what basically happened, of course, the Night of the Long Knives, as you know, and there's a picture of Ernst Röhm, okay, the leader of the SA, um, he, of course, and the other leaders were emasculated, the SA um, was, uh, the SA leadership was murdered, and, of course, the person who did the murdering, well, not him directly, but his squad, the Schutzstaffel, the SS, the Black Shirts, the Protection Squads, Hitler's bodyguard, effectively were given the job um, to um, carry out the executions on the Night of the Long Knives. Um, so, effectively, um, looking at the text here, the SA were emasculated. They would never again be such a significant political t tool Okay, they had served their purpose and a huge job they had done. Um, but their role had always been really, in a sense, mainly a propaganda tool. In the 1920s, the rise to power, they were the image of unity. Now, for a brief period of time, for six months at the beginning of 1933, uh, during the national uprising, they had been auxiliarised to the police. They had been, as, a, as I say, let off the leash. They had been allowed to attack the opponents, to crush the communists. Um, and that... That was what Rome believed the movement should be about. It should be about violence. And, of course, what he wanted was that revolution to continue um, fully and to remove the um, 
every every aspect of Germany that was not Nazi. But of course, as we've seen, Hitler called a halt to the revolution and said, no, we need to keep the civil service, we need to keep the businessmen, we need to keep the country running in a legal way, in a law, in an orderly way. We can't continue the revolution indefinitely. And so, of course, Ernst Röhm was removed because he didn't agree with that. And in a sense, the new force in Germany now would be the SS. Okay, the Knight of the Long Knives marked the real emergence of Himmler's SS as the major power element in Nazi Germany. Um, so from late 1934, the SS would expand steadily at the expense of both the Nazi Party and the SA, which had largely served their purpose now that Hitler had put himself into power. Um, so again, we'll just go to a, a, another slide to sort of visualise that again. So what's basically happening now is you've got Hitler at the top. Again, just part this for the moment. You've got the state, which is not Nazi. That's the apparatus that Hitler wants to take over, the civil service, the police, um, the, the education system, all aspects of running Germany. And then you've got the Nazi movement. And in effect, you've still got the Nazi party. Okay, the NSDAP. They they are still important, and we'll, we'll talk about them in a separate lesson. You, you've still got the SA, but the SA are no longer going to be as important. In a sense, they will wither away. Um, they, they, they continued to be there for the next 12 years, but really their role was mainly a propaganda tool. And then you've got the SS that were part of the SA, but effectively what's now happened is they have broken away and they've been given independence. The key outcome is they were no longer part of the SA. And what Hitler basically did is he, is he gave the SS an independent role. And over time, the SS grew. They became the major element of the Nazi movement. Okay, So the SS, over time... Uh, grew um, so um, that's the situation as it was in 1934 by um, let's say 1939 the SS had taken over the German police etc um, so the SS is the sort of major element um, of Nazism effectively grew they became the larger element of Nazism over the next 12 years Whereas the SS effectively withered away. Okay, they continued to be there, but their, their role was an important. Amount. Likewise, um, Hitler's intentions that the Nazi Party, in a sense, had fulfilled its role. The future of Germany under Hitler was what we call the SS state. Okay, so hopefully that was useful to you. Um, we'll develop a lot of these themes in the rest of the course. Thank you.